Today's topic is the goal of meditation. All spiritual seekers adopt one or other or all methods of spiritual practice. One of the prominent method is meditation. Those of us who have read Raja Yoga know that meditation or the yoga as it is described in Raja Yoga is making the mind calm. Yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Mind is always restless. Ripples always come in the lake of mind. So to make the mind calm, free from any waves, free from even the smallest ripples, is the goal of Raja Yoga. When that happens, when mind is calm, the yoga says, then the reality by itself reveals. Meditation is not a means to realization. Is that realization is not an effect to meditation, effect of meditation, but realization happens by the process of meditation. Meditation is the path, is a means. Why do we meditate? We meditation is an act. When we sit for meditation, when we try to meditate, it is an act as we work in the field or kitchen or we drive the car. Similar is an act. It is a mental act. We sit quiet and try to do something. We try to control the mind and bring it to whatever we say it does. Either we want to make it free from all thoughts or we want to make it concentrated on one particular thought or one particular object. That is the attempt we do. So when we do any act, there has to be some reason, some goal, some purpose of an act. So what is the purpose of meditation? What is the goal of meditation? So it varies from person to person. For example, those who teach yoga, they also teach meditation, shavasana, is a time when one completely relaxes one's mind and body after doing some yogic exercise. Throughout the yogic exercise, there they say, breathe slowly, bend some organ, and try to calm your mind. Yogic exercise is connected with both training the mind and body, unlike other physical exercises. So they teach that if you meditate or if you do yogic exercises, your body will become a fit instrument. Fit instrument for what? Fit instrument to achieve the goal. The goal is goal achieved through the body. Not really through the body, but yes, body and mind. Mind is the main thing which helps us to achieve the goal. And that mind cannot act if body is not right. Mind and body are so interlinked. That's why we say so psychosomatic being or psychosomatic aspect of our personality. This mind and body are very much interconnected. If body is sick, mind tends to be uncontrolled. That's why the yogi exercise is. For many persons, meditation, go and sit for meditation for 5 minutes, 10 minutes. What is the purpose? Most purpose that we often hear or we often think is peace of mind. At least mind is calm, I find a little peace because it is withdrawn. So is the goal of meditation is attain the peace of mind? that we, little calming of the mind, that may be one goal of meditation. Nowadays, you might have seen in some magazines, once it came in Time magazine, sometimes it's 
National Geographic it comes that meditation has been found to help in having good health. Good health leading to long life. There has been many attempts that human life can be extended to be to we say now in a hundred years, they say it can be made an average life to 150 years or even 200 years if all diseases are controlled. We have, we have right medicine for right diseases and a good physical exercise and yogic exercise, man can live up to 200 years. So is the goal of meditation living for 200 years, doubling the average life expectancy or aim of life, is that the goal of meditation? That I want to live double what I would have lived. Shankaracharya was supposed to live for eight years. And when he was eight, then his, it was the last day of his life. He went to bathe in the river nearby and and crocodile really caught him. And he was being dragged to inside the water. Then he requested mother for their house was on the bank of river and there he asked mother give me permission to take to be sannyasi. So mother said why? She didn't want his son at eight years. Who wants their son of eight years to become a sannyasi? So mother was not relenting before that. Now the son was going into the river and being drowned by this crocodile alligator. Then mother said yes I give you permission. As soon as he got the permission, the result was already there, so crocodile left him. So his life was doubled from 8 years to 16 years. That was his life. So that they say, if one takes sannyasa, sannyasa is like a death. You know the story, just like digress from here. Holy Mother's life, there, there was one devotee, and uh, Holy Mother said to one of them that, Today itself you go to, from Jairambati you go to Belurmat and ask Rakhal to give you some nice tonight itself at midnight. So Brahmachari didn't understand what is the reason so sudden this thing. Then he really went as mother has said and he um, reported to Radha Maharaj. Radha Maharaj says yes I have to give you some nice tonight. So he gave sannyas that night itself. Suddenly it was arranged. Then later on he asked mother, why mother was that hurry to give me sannyas? I couldn't understand. Then mother said, you know, at that time when you were have, when I asked you to take sannyas, that time you were supposed to die with a snake bite. So if you had not taken sannyasa, you would have been dead. This sannyasa in our tradition is like a dying to this world. So she asked, Mother asked. So Sankaracharya got double life. So here also we feel that we can get life, longer life. Is that the goal of sannyasa? Sankaracharya lived for 32 years. Later on, between this 8 and 16 years, he wrote he wrote all the explanations on uh, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita and Upanishads and Brahma Sutra. All this literary work that we read of Sankaracharya is supposed to have been read, written between his 8, <coughs> 8 and 16. Then when Vyasadeva once came in disguise to test this person who had written uh, something on his commentary, Vyasa's Brahma Sutra is written by Vyasadeva. And Vyasadeva, he, Sankaracharya read him something and Vyasadeva was so happy, he said, you have done wonderful work and I bless you that your life is doubled still more. <laughs> so from 16 to 32 by the grace of Vyasadeva, in that last 16 years of his life, he did all uh, discussions and arguments and conquered other religions and established Hinduism, preached Advaita, preached Hinduism, Sanatana Dharma. That was the last part of his life, 32 years. Now, they say meditation, as you might have read those articles in the time or in National Geographic, that they say this meditation also helps to fight diseases. It brings immunity. Many diseases cannot come to a person who is calm, peaceful, meditative. So, we are freed from diseases. So, is the goal of meditation to keep body long life and keep body free from disease? 
That cannot be goal. That may be one of the aspects that medita meditation does. There are something called, there is a one goal, one product you want to bring. From the mineral you want to bring some gold. But there are so many byproducts that come. Copper, nickel, those are all byproducts. So these things, peaceful mind, disease free body, a little longer life, they may be byproducts of meditation, but that cannot be goal, the goal of meditation. The goal of meditation is, of course in one sense, it is the freedom from disease. But that disease not, is not malaria or cancer or any other disease. That disease is worldliness, disease of worldliness, bhava roga. Worldliness itself is a big disease that is a good. Other disease uh, remain till body is there. When body is not there, the disease also die of the body. But this bhava roga is such disease, it goes on even if you give up this body, take another fresh body, this bhava roga will be there. There are some diseases that enter into seed, some fungal diseases that go inside the seed. And you sow that seed with that disease, that fungus grows with the seedling and it again affects another seed that will be born. So Bhavaroga is like that. It comes with the jiva. It transmigrates from one body to another, from one life to another, this Bhavaroga grows. What is this Bhavaroga? What is the disease of worldliness? Disease of worldliness is to not realize this world, not to know this world. Become being ignorant of the real nature of the world and being ignorant of the real nature of the self. That is Bhavaroga. Become yourself, becoming a first misunderstanding the real nature of the world, then making yourself a part of this changing world. So this makes Bhavaroga. There is no harm in living in the world, being a part of the world. If we could do it with knowledge, that knowledge alone can cure this disease, no medicine. So that knowledge of the self, self-knowledge is the medicine for Bhavaroga. And that self-knowledge is the goal of meditation. The final goal, the ultimate goal of meditation is self-knowledge. Let me read from Swami Adeshwarananda what he says about self-knowledge. According to the Upanishads, a mortal attaining this self becomes immortal, knowing the self, having the self-knowledge. In pursuit of this self-knowledge, we break through the different layers of our consciousness, shear through the formations of our ego, and plummet deep into our real nature. Self-knowledge cannot be described in words, but after attaining it, we are never the same again. With that knowledge, the walls that seem to separate us from the rest of the universe disappear. The dualities of subject and object Knower and know, seer and see, all merge in the indescribable expanse of the Absolute. Consciousness of time and space is obliterated, and the fetters of causality are broken forever. Through self-knowledge we discover who we really are. No sacrifice is too great to achieve this goal. No effort in this venture is ever lost or wasted. Swami Vivekananda praised Sri Ramakrishna, often pestered him, I want to have that ultimate self-realization, self-knowledge. As was being Swami Vivekananda himself said in the talks with his uh, disciples and devotees, Kali Nathmani Bindati. Sri Ramakrishna says, wait, 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 you will, you will understand in time. Just have patience. So he was pestering and said, I want to realize that when I am freed from the clutches of nature, 
Nothing of nature disturbs me. I want to be completely free, as it's read here. I want to merge myself in that reality. Go beyond the impediments or imperfections of mind and body. Transcend that and merge in that reality. So Sri Ramakrishna said, yes, yes, it will happen. One day at Kashipur, where he was serving Sri Ramakrishna, suddenly he was thinking of something and he saw a bright light behind his head. And that light became brighter and brighter. Ultimately, it burst and Sri Swami Vivekananda said that he lost outer consciousness. And he was lying that way on the floor near Sri Ramakrishna's room. After some time, another person was also meditating, Swami Advaita Ananda, so Gopal Senior. He was also meditating in this room with Swami Vivekananda. After some time, Swami Vivekananda says, Gopalda, what is this? Where is my body? He, he found, he came down that he had the experience of this self-knowledge. He had the experience of merging oneself in Brahman. Merging oneself, our reality, into the supreme reality. And then after he came to the ordinary consciousness of the world, he does, cannot find, he finds his eye, but he cannot find his limbs. Where is my hand? Where is my body? Where is my legs? Where is... That thing was his problem. And he was crying, Gopalda, where is my body? Then Gopalda also got, he said, it is there, there it is. You are full. But he did not find, he was crying, Swami Vivekananda was crying. Gopalda rushed to Sri Ramakrishna and said, what happened to Naren? I don't know. But he says, where is my body? He is not finding his body, though he is intact. Sri Ramakrishna laughed and he says, let him, let, let the rascal remain in that state for some time. He had been troubling me long time, asking, give me realization, give me the Brahma Jnana, give me the, the Atma Jnana, like that he was saying again and again. Then, after some time, they came to normal consciousness and then filled with bliss. That is called submerging oneself in that experience when you know the truth. After that, man in that same. That was the first experience of Nirvikarma Samadhi of Swami Vivekananda, which he had twice more. It is, he might have many times, we don't know, but twice more it is recorded in the US. He had one in Thousand Island Park, another in Camp Percy. So, Swami Vivekananda came after some time to Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna said, So, now you have, Mother has shown you the reality. What is real? What is realization? What is Brahmanjana? You already have that. But, that knowledge will not be given to you forever. I keep the, the lock, I lock your knowledge, box of knowledge, and keep that key with me. I will not give you this until you finish my work. That word he used. Until you finish my work. When you have finished, then it will be given to you. And he said to his other disciples that when Naren realizes who he is, then at that very moment he will give up his body. So that locking his knowledge and keeping the key with him was very important for Narendra to give a little tinge of Maya. I will work, I will teach, I will spiritualize the whole world. That is also part of Maya. If one sees God everywhere, Raja Maharaj could not even put signature. He said, how to put my signature? I forget. He said, she had to go back to Belurumat and says, Swamiji, when are you going? He said, I don't know when I'm going. So if, sometimes he said, you have to instruct these uh, boys. So he can, he doesn't say anything to them. Later on, after a few days, the head of the center said, Swamiji, he instructs these brahmacharis. So I say, I cannot do this. I am seeing God everywhere. How can I teach? If I see God, if I see all perfectness everywhere, then how one will teach? To teach, one has to think, I can teach you. I am, I know more than you. So that sitting is not there. That type of thought would have come to Swami Vivekananda. He would say, whole world is one, it is all full of knowledge, full of God. What? How one will teach God? There is no you and me. 
So that's why that little, that feeling was kept by Sri Ramakrishna to do good to the world. That's why incarnation, God has to incarnate to train his people to teach to the world. Give him full power, full knowledge, exp give him experience once, withdraw that knowledge. Otherwise he would submerge in that. Otherwise, that, that's what Sri Ramakrishna said, ordinary person, if he had the knowledge of Brahman, in twenty-one days, if it got, does not come out to normal consciousness, he gives up his body. Nothing, it's all the dream. He wakes up to the reality. Body is just thrown away. The consciousness in the mind merges in the consciousness of the Supreme Being. If the body and the consciousness is like, they give the example like a pot, full of sea water is put under, inside the sea. So there is water inside the pot, there is vast expense of water outside the pot. Now this, because of this pot, pot thinks I am this, I am that, this all it feels. Suppose this pot is broken, this pot is ignorance, that pot is the thing that makes I am this body, I am this mind, I am that, this all ego is that pot. Suppose this pot is broken, ego is removed, then what will happen? That water will be one with the upper other water. That's what happens in Brahma Jnana, they say. When a person realizes God, that pot is removed and water mixes with water. In Kathopanishad, it is said, what happens, what is the experience in Brahma Jnana? It is like mixing the pure water in other pure water. Nothing, no change. No death, no going, no coming. It was there already. Only the pot is taken away. That was some. So that is the experience of a man of knowledge. In the Bhagavad Gita, the self-knowledge is praised like this. Yatro paramate chittam niruddham yoga sevaya Yatra chaiva atmanatmanam asyanna atmani tushyati That in which the mind, restrained by the practice of concentration, rests quiescent. That in which Seeing the self, through the self, one rejoices in, in one's own self. Sukham atyantikam yattad buddhi grahyam atindriyam vyatti yatra nachaivayam istitas chalati tattata. What happens to that? Who realizes the truth? Who realizes the Atman which reaches the goal of meditation? That in which one knows the boundless joy beyond the reach of the senses and grasped only by the understanding that in which being established one never departs from reality that is the knowledge of the self yam labdhva chaparam labham manyate nadikam tata yasmin sthikto na dukhena guru napi vichalyate that on gaining which one thinks there is no greater gain and wherein established, one is not moved even by the heaviest of sorrows. Tam vidya dukkha sam yoga viyogam yoga sangitam sa nischayena yogtabhyo yogo anirvinna chetasa. Let that be known as yoga, which is severance from the contact of pain. It is to be practiced with perseverance and with an undaunted mind. That is what Gita says, what happens to a realized soul which attains self-knowledge with the help of yoga or meditation. Self-knowledge or vision of God is not the effect of meditation. Meditation only purifies the heart and cleanses the mirror of the mind where the self-existing reality is revealed. So, as the definition of Yoga by Patanjali. Yoga chitta vritti nirodha. You control all the ripples and waves of the mind, reality will be revealed. When mind is in ripples, then we see unreal things. When mind is calm, we see the right things. That we often find in our experience also. When we are agitated, we see the things so wrongly. When you are very angry, we see everything wrong. We take every decision wrong. Your mind is in big waves when you are angry. Huge waves of anger that coming and all the things that you do is all incorrect. When mind is little quiet and calm, then you take the right decisions. When minds, all the ripples ever are subsided, then the reality manifests itself that they say. Then 
when the, the purpose of life is the attainment of spiritual knowledge, no doubt. But after attaining the spiritual knowledge, there is a thing called spiritual enjoyment. You enjoy, enjoy this world with the background of that knowledge. How do you enjoy? There are many types of joy. When one becomes spiritual, he becomes so happy. In everything he becomes happy. What does he enjoy? What a holy person, what a spiritual person enjoys? One of the things that a holy person or a spiritual person, a person advanced in his spirituality enjoys is the name of God. The name of God, Rama, Rama, forest is just repeating, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, we, do, we don't enjoy. But among us, who does it with devotion, he or she enjoys more. And the holy person, every name of Rama for him is a great source of joy. So, spiritual attainment gives a different aspect of enjoyment in the name of God. Something great joy in the name of God. That what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu experienced, that what Sri Ramakrishna experienced, that what Radha experienced. Just name of God. Krishna, you say, and different. Different attitude. That is felt by the people. They said, when Swami Vivekananda said, India, there was so much of love, so much of respect in that name itself. So, after attaining spiritual knowledge through meditation, you start relishing the name of God. That reverence, that joy, that love, everything starts pulling, pouring in that name itself. Then, that meditation gives serenity of mind. That peace which never is disturbed by anything in the world. Things happen in the world like that. Before before you were adept in meditation, you the things happen in the same way. You go to office, some colleague says something wrong to you, boss comes and scolds you, but your reaction suddenly changes with this adaptation in meditation. You become quiet, you become calm. Things of the world doesn't disturb you. You don't have to think, oh, today I am not react. No, just meditating in your shrine, you have that effect in your office. You don't have to think anything in the plan. I'm going to boss, boss will say some, something to me, I will not get angry. Nothing. Your mind is put in that way. The serenity of mind is always there to the man who has attained this spiritual knowledge. This spiritual knowledge sometimes may be expressed as inebriation or ecstasy of divine intoxication. Then, when one has that ecstasy, then he cannot just contain in quietude, sitting there. He starts laughing, he or she starts dancing. That is a still higher expression of that joy of his spiritual attainment. Spiritual attainment doesn't make you just calm and become, become a stone. It will make you full of life, full of joy, expressed physically, expressed mentally. That will be there. The dance, Sri Ramakrishna used to dance like a lion, they say. The Panihati incident, if you read in the gospel, Sri Ramakrishna goes, there was a kirtan going on, and Sri Ramakrishna jumped like an arrow. That is the, that is the description. He was in the boat, jumped from the boat and and go to the center of that where the kirtan was going and he starts, he was not keeping well at that time and he starts dancing like a lion and everybody surrounded him and started singing the name. When such person comes amidst us, the mental level of all of us rises, the joy of everyone rises. Even a small persons, when we take the name of God, we sit together and sing the name of God, we read gospel together, we feel so much of joy. Very little of Joy it is compared to the that joy of a spiritual attainment. The expression joy of a spiritual attainment is expressed that way. Then there is another expression, bliss of total absorption in God consciousness. Sometimes you are just quiet, totally immersed in God consciousness. Maybe you are not dancing, but you are full of that bliss, not able to speak even. And the finally, that spiritual attainment may be expressed through self-dedication to the welfare of all beings. Atmano Mokshartham Jagantitaicha. That has to be there. If this fifth thing is not there, if you are not connected with the people, you are not 
avatar or varista. That Swami Siddharananda gave that example was very nice. That the greatest of avatar, the greatest realized person is that who feels for the human beings. Though he has attained that supreme joy which is not disturbed, he never disturbed his his mind is never disturbed for himself, but it is disturbed when others feel sorrow. Because he feels his own self in everyone. Other person cries, other person suffers, it is his own suffering. Distinction vanishes, ego goes away. Separation from the universe goes away. That's what, that's what we read just now. So that is the goal of meditation, to attain that highest knowledge and express this attainment of knowledge, spiritual attainment, through this spiritual enjoyment. The joy of attainment of knowledge is expressed in the sweetness, taking the sweetness of God's name, in relishing the serenity of meditation, in ecstasy of divine inebriation, in sometimes bliss of total absorption, and finally in self-dedication to the welfare of all beings. Now, how, how should we start? We are far behind. Just we talk about this theoretical that it may happen. The goal is that. But where do you stand? That we have to understand. We are just the beginners, just the first steppers, just the toddling kid of one year, one and a half year old. So we are learning to walk. So when we start to learn to walk, we need to start meditation. It's a long process. Kale Nathmani Bindati Sanei Sanei Ruparamed Buddhya Dhriti Grihi Daya says the Gita. You have to attain that Sanei Sanei slowly, gradually. But we have must adopt some process to attain that perfection in meditation. Then we'll attain the goal. So the first is, first is we need to try to put our mind on object of meditation. So what can be the object of meditation? It can be a divine form. Shiva, whatever you feel divine, untouched by the world, your goal, who has realized the truth, who is, who is moving in, the, in, that, in that realization, any divine form can be that. Shiva, Kali, any God, whatever idea of God you have. The light, spiritual light, light of the self, we don't know. It's all imagination. Who has seen the spiritual light unless you realize? But we can imagine a soothing light within our heart. Soothing light. And we can meditate on that light itself. You don't have to think anything. But it's a divine light of spiritual consciousness. Just imagine that it's there inside light. When you close the eyes, it's all darkness. But try to see light inside. And try to feel that light and Think of nothing else but that light, that is one state. Another is, we can meditate on an incarnation of God. God, the Supreme Being, the Own, taken the human form. And we can imagine Him, He is sitting inside us. Which form? Whichever form like you, you like. Krishna, Rama, Buddha, Jesus, Sri Ramakrishna, Chaitanya, any form of incarnation of God. We can meditate on any perfected person. Shankara. Swami Vivekananda, Holy Mother, Holy Mother was Goddess herself, best object of meditation. So, just sitting at the... But there has to be a perfect way of meditation. Not that today... And every day, the same form has to be meditated upon. Meditation is not recollection. Meditation is trying to put the mind and mind taking that form. So, for meditation there are three factors. One is the object of concentration. That has to be one particular object. If you don't like uh, form, then you can meditate on Om as the symbol of God. Just Om sound. You can meditate on Gayatri Mantra. Just uh, in Gayatri Mantra, there are two things. One is the prayer, one is the meditation. I, the meditation is I meditate on the effulgence of the Creator, the light of the Creator. And may he guide my intellect. That itself, the light and the prayer, constant going on, meditating on the light and the prayer. You guide my intellect. My mind should not be guided by an, by my whims, by my samskara, by anybody else, by the ghost. But it should be controlled and guided guided by you, O Lord, with all good, all graciousness. 
you please come take care, take charge of my mind, intellect, and guide it. O Kalma, total surrender. That is another, uh, total surrender is another um, result of attainment of goal. So, object of concentration should be one. If you meditate on the Holy Mother with standing every day, that has to be the object of meditation. If you meditate on Holy Mother as we see in the picture here, that should be the thing. If you meditate on the Sri Ramakrishna, this poster, that poster has to be meditated every day, not a different poster. Sri Krishna, if you want to meditate standing, Tribhanga Mura, like playing, that should be the poster. So, this object of concentration should be firm and constant. You can recollect Sri Krishna's life, that's called Leela Dhyanam. But this dhyanam or meditation should be on, on one particular object of concentration. That is that should be fixed. It cannot be changed. The second thing, another factor in meditation is the center of consciousness. Where to meditate? You can meditate in the image of God outside yourself. You close your eyes and see God is sitting there, particular object. But that can be meditated in the heart. They prescribe the heart eyebrows or the head inside the body. Those are the planes of consciousness, places of consciousness. So, wherever you start meditating, once we start there, Sri Ramakrishna always said, heart is the best place. Danka Mara Jaga. You know what is Danka Mara? Danka is the, like the music. Hmm? They announce that today, this earlier time, there was the well, how the, there, there were no emails and TV and radio. So announcement will be done. Someone will come and play the drum and say, "Hey, oh, this is happening. This king is coming or something, whatever." That is the way the announcement was done. So everybody knows that. So heart is the best place for meditation. It is Danka Mara Jaga. It is already announced. Everybody knows. It is so common, commonly known thing. So the best place to meditate is the heart. You know the story how Swami Virajananda, one of that great monk of the Ramakrishna order, he was meditating on head and he was sick, terrible headache and it was not going. And he was treated by so many allopathy, homeopathy, it was not being cured. So, but he didn't know. He didn't know why headache is there. Then he comes to Holy Mother, his guru, Holy Mother by seeing him, he knew, she knew and uh, she said, Son, child, where do you meditate? That was her question for this headache. He said, Mother, I meditate on head. Why do you meditate on head? He said, Mother, I feel so much joy in meditating on head. The mother said, Nikuchi kore said, Tumar Anandu. Here with your deep joy. You meditate, you meditate here. He touched his heart and said, Meditate at the heart. That is the safest place. That is where the God reveals. That is the first when in, in, in during uh, in Kundalini Yoga, we, we, we know that it is the fourth plane of consciousness where the Kundalini, that power of, uh, of the mother, the, the spiritual power lying dormant in our um, muladhara, base of the spine, that rises. The first three are very worldly um, centers. The fourth spiritual center begins with the heart. So there should be one particular plane, center of consciousness to meditate. Particular form, no change in that. Particular center of consciousness. Another is the method employed to invoke concentration should be same every day. As Guru said, how to meditate. That should be there. Sometimes you begin from head to foot, and sometimes foot to head. That will not do. Sometimes only you meditate on foot, sometimes only on face. That won't do. The method invoke method you utilize to invoke the concentration also should be same. And another thing, that is the internal thing, other thing is the place for meditation. There should be a corner, even a seat for meditation should be fixed. You have particular asana you sit for meditation. That all give mental association. As soon as you sit there for meditation, you feel, oh, now, now mind slowly is uh, guided by the association. Even the dress, wearing loose dress, sitting cross-legged, if you cannot, then particular chair, particular distance from uh, the symbol of God that you have in front of you. If you put any, if you are a believer in, form of, in the form of God, then put the image or the statue in front and that place. So this all associates, particular room if you can make. 
for a shrine to this mall or a corner. This all help in starting to practice meditation. And when meditation starts, then the object of meditation is the mind starts flowing there. But there is a lot of obstacles in meditation. It's not easy. Meditation is the highest form of worship and the best form to for many to realize God. There you understand what is the level of your mind. So slowly regular practice of meditation on that particular object makes mind concentrated. Even that spiritual attainment or this progress in spiritual life makes our worldly life easier. Life in the world becomes more peaceful, more calm, full, more happy and joyful. So as they say that if you do yoga and yogic exercise properly, you will find peace of mind. It is true. Your body will be alright. It is true. So it is Patanjali, if you read, if you have read uh, uh, Raja Yoga of Swami Vivekananda, you have seen how many things that yoga, this practice of meditation can give you. You may become small, you may become big, you will remember many things, you may remember the past life, so many things are there if you are at all interested in that. Those are all free things, those all, you get the byproducts, but don't focus on the byproducts, they say. Focus on the ultimate goal, which is the realization of God. So finally, the goal of meditation is certainly, it is the realization of God, which is known as beatific vision, vision of God, Atma Shabchatkara, Brahma Jnana, so many names, peace that passes understanding, all so many names for that realization of God. That is the goal of meditation. And it can we can begin to practice that through the first step of trying sitting for at a particular time of the day, once, twice or once. First they are prescribed twice in the place if, which you feel holy, called shrine or a corner, with object of meditation in front, closing the eyes and thinking of the object of meditation within your heart and trying to think it for some time, 10, 15, 20 minutes, one hour. And then you find how the mind plays, how the mind goes away to other things. You pull back and pull there, and slowly practicing, shane, shane, rupa, Slowly, slowly, you begin to practice that and that object of meditation becomes living. It talks you, with you, it just you are in bliss, that all experience of realization of the spiritual progress that comes with the deepening of the meditation. And finally, the meditation may lead us to its goal, which is the realization of the self.